Good day, Grade 11. Today we'll be looking at the Internet and the World Wide Web. So, firstly, this, especially online technologies, has grown a lot. And sports like eSport has gone very big, and there's actually a lot of money into that at this stage. So, and all our applications, as we know, becomes cloud-based. So a lot of people use the internet and the World Wide Web on a daily basis for everything they do. So the incredible growth is only possible because of the internet. So we've got our internet applications, video streaming, live streaming, multimedia compression and so forth. Okay, so the difference between our World Wide Web and the Internet. The World Wide Web is a subsection of the Internet. The Internet is the World Wide Network, while the World Wide Web is just a subsection of that. Other parts of the Internet would be like the Dark Web and all that. All of them are part of the Internet, but the World Wide Web is a piece of it, the Dark Web is a piece of it, and so forth. So each website, like when you go to facebook.com or google.com or our ehs.org.za, all of those websites have got their own unique IP address. But what these companies do is they purchase a domain and that can give it a name. So if you type in google.com, you actually go to a specific website, even though the URL on top says that you're going to google.com just to make it easier so that you don't need to remember all those numbers. Alright, we get three kinds of websites. So in the old days, we started with Web 1.0. Those were also called static web pages, where all the information was programmed directly into the web page. So you can just read off the web page. There's nothing you can do. There's no interaction. You just gain information from these websites. Then it evolved a bit to Web 2.0, where now suddenly you can search for stuff, send messages, post updates, watch videos. So there's interaction with the website itself. And that makes it Web 2.0. And then it evolved again to Web 3.0, where because of the vast amount of information, the internet actually became smarter with inside quotes, where now they actually look at the user and use some of his information through either cookies or preferences you saved on like Google and so forth. So they will actually look at what is your location, what's previous searches you've made and so forth and so forth. And they use that to give you a better idea of what you want. So they'll limit the websites to websites that applies to you more directly. All right, another new thing is the Internet of Things, or IoT. IoT, Internet of Things, just tells us all, or majority of our household appliances and appliances we use in general now suddenly became connected due to the Internet. So that is our security systems. A lot of people can nowadays, from work or from wherever they are on their phone, maybe look at what's happening on the cameras, they can disarm and arm the security systems at home, they can see what's happening and so forth. Household appliances, you can actually, on your way home, you can put the aircon on so long so that by the time you reach home, your house is either warm or cold, depending on what you want. So, lights, you can put lights on and off and so forth, all with your cell phone and the internet. Connected cars, our cars nowadays are also connected to the internet, so you can actually have your GPS and everything linked in and you can also track your car, about where is the car, where was it parked and so forth. And that's everything thanks to I IoT, our Internet of Things. Next thing is big data. That general term is difficult to define, but generally it's large data sets. And it uses computing strategies to handle these large data sets to give us um, proper information from all this data. As this word says, big data, and you remember data is just um, 
information or just yeah just just data while information is then the process data when we use this data and use statistical measures to get what is the highest and lowest and average and what is the most commonly bought thing and to profile customers of a certain company and so forth and so forth so there's four characteristics of big data volume firstly it's large data sets variety so big data comes in different sources so that's for the, all the different companies or the different types of companies to store the information we'll look at that a bit further on velocity big data practitioners refer to real-time streaming system because there's so much data that needs to go in and come out and it needs to be up to date to make it actually worthwhile that data is constantly being added processed analyzed as information gets in and goes out and then the value the ultimate challenge of big data is to become valuable so you need complex systems to actually extract actual value from all this information so all the information coming into these systems we need to actually make it valuable to make these things worthwhile so different uses customer profiling so you could for your company if you use big data you could actually see what type of customers actually visit your company the next part is advanced patient care so in the past, nurses and doctors monitored patients, patients, physical, vital signs, and so forth. But now they can be discharged and still be looking after themselves, and the doctor can look after them with real-time monitoring, with sensors that's placed in so that they can actually see what's happening, and also agriculture by using soil conditions, wind, fertilizer, water, rain, and so forth from all the farms in the area or the whole district and they can use that to better guess or estimate what's going to happen in that particular farm okay multimedia so we've got our youtube netflix and so forth so our problem here is bandwidth because multimedia uses a lot of bandwidth so data is important so we need to see how can we better manage that so two things to look at is downloading and streaming. When you are downloading, um, media is saved onto your computer and then you watch it from your hard drive. While if you are streaming, you watch it directly off the internet. So the information is actually just temporarily saved onto your computer. So sort of just loaded into your RAM, you watch it and then it gets released again. While Downloading means it downloads the whole file to your computer and once it's on your computer you can actually then watch it and after you've watched the movie clip it's still on your computer that is for downloading while if you're streaming after you've done watch the movie clip it's not on there anymore and you'll actually need to download it again if you want to watch it again and then yeah, so that's downloading Our streaming that we spoke about. Buffering is when your computer tries to load the next clip. So let's say your internet is slower than the speed of the movie itself, then buffering happens where it tries to load the future stuff that you need to watch if, um, while you are waiting. So normally you'll see like a circle thing going around. So it's buffering, but mean it's trying to load the previous or the next set of clips or next few seconds of the video clip and then plays again so that you can watch it All right so different things we can also get here you get live streaming websites like twitch which allows you to watch like esport matches that's happening in real time so while the people is actually playing you can watch what they are doing while we also get our video on demand, VOD websites like Netflix and Showmax, where movies or series are uploaded and you can watch them anytime. Alright, now as we spoke about these multimedia, 
the problem is the data, the size of the movies and video clips and stuff that we want to watch. So that's where compression technology came in. Uh, we learned previously also about the two types of compression. We get our lossless and lossy type of compression. So with lossless is a compression that we normally use like on documents where after, after you compressed it, if you decompress it again, you actually you didn't lose any of your data. All the information is still there. While with lossy compression, um, compression you actually lose some of your information. And lossy is used for media. As soon as we start to compress either a video or a picture, you actually lose some of the quality of that picture. So here's some estimations of data use. So high quality video is about one gig per hour. And this is for one person. So if in a house you've got four people watching high quality, now suddenly you get to 240 gigabytes a month if they watch one hour a day and so forth. So our compression, if you look like this, so if you just take a one by one, okay, so this is the resolution. So your resolution should be start with most probably 100 by 100. And then as you start compressing, you will actually lose information. So that's where you will get like your HD videos, which they say is 1080 and nowadays I think the 4k videos are also out so the better the quality the much bigger the file that means the more data you need to download but then as soon as you start compressing it to either 1080 or then to 720p it means that's the amount of pixels in like the, the square so you will actually as soon as you get less pixels like it's indicated here the movie doesn't become so nice. It takes like the average color of the whole block and tries to color it in. So you want to get a good middleman where you can actually save data but still have a decent picture. And then they've given you here some compressed file formats. So MP3, MPEG4, MPEG2, JPEG, all of them are different formats for compression mp3 as you know it's for video ach, audio mpeg4 is our video and audio mpeg2 is video jpeg is for image and that's it for today thank you very much everybody good luck see you next time